Hello and welcome to this webinar on fire detection solutions for pharma manufacturing plants organized by Express Pharma and powered by Bosch. I am Lakshmi Priyanaya, Assistant Editor, Express Pharma. Today, we will explore how Bosch's fire detection systems can help overcome the unique fire challenges in the pharma industry. Our expert speaker today is A.R. Rajkumar, Product Marketing Manager for Fire Systems South Asia, Bosch Building Technologies. He'll share his insights on overcoming the challenges of fire safety in pharma industry. But before we hand it over to our expert, let me quickly take you through the house rules. This webinar is being broadcasted live. It will be available on demand on our website after it is over. We will have a round of Q&A at the end of the webinar. You can send your questions during the webinar using the questions box. We will have poll questions in between. If you face any technical issues, please try to refresh your browser and use uh, the questions box to reach out to us. We'll respond to the same. If you have any further questions, please reach out to us using the questions box. Now I'll introduce the speaker. Our speaker today has over 17 years of diverse experience in Bosch, working in both B2B and B2C business environments. He started his career in Bosch in the year 2005 as a graduate engineer trainee and has held several roles in sales and product marketing. He's a subject matter expert in fire systems with over 12 years of specialization. His wide experience covers working on medium to large scale projects, cutting across verticals of manufacturing, energy, commercial, and government. Now, before I hand it over to our speaker, we have a poll coming up on our screens. Please do participate. It will stay on your screens for 30 seconds. So now we have a poll on our screen. How many ma pharma manufacturing plants do you have in India? The choices are as follows, one or two. The second choice is three to five. The third choice is six to 10 and more than 10. Please do participate. It will stay on your screen for 30 seconds. Can we have the results, please? So the results are as follows. Over 30% of our audience has said that they have one or two pharma manufacturing plants. Over 27% have said that they have three to five. 6% have said they have six to 10 manufacturing plants in India. And 36% uh, of our audience have informed us that they have more than 10 plants in India. So these are the results of our polls. Mr. Rajkumar, I hand it over to you. Please take it on. Okay. Namaste and thank you so much now for taking time out. Uh, all the participants here in this call, uh, it means a lot to us. Um, on the day when we have this India-Sri Lanka World Cup happening, and of course you're working from the office as well. So it is very important that you think, you know, you took this time out to join this webinar. Thank you so much. It means a lot to us. Uh, myself, Rajkumar, uh, I work as product marketing manager for Business Unit Fire Systems, looking after India and SARC as a region. I'm also accompanied by uh, Mr. Jignesh Ora, who's the sales director for Business Unit Fire in this call. He will also join us uh, towards the end. He's there in the call, but he would also talk to you towards the end when we have this Q&A. And we also have Ms. Juliana from Germany, from Bosch, Germany, who's also in this call as well. Yeah. Uh, of course, the topic for the day, uh, as, you are, as you are aware, we see it on the screen as well, overcoming the challenges of fire safety in the pharmaceutical industry. We have roughly about, uh, uh, say, about 345, which means about, uh, say, 40 minutes to talk about this topic. And this 40 minutes is too little. So whatever whatever we can you know, talk about, whatever we can address today, we will do that. But definitely, we would definitely want to get in touch with you as and when we have an opportunity to talk to you on the requirement of yours to present our products even more in detail to talk to you of what we have to offer and how it is better than the traditional systems that we have in the industry today. Yeah. Okay, I'm just switching slides. And on the second slide here, you see a picture of a Bosch office here on the screen. And then we have some text on the right. This is to say that Bosch has spent about 100 years in this country, India. Yeah, this it was in 2022 uh, when Bosch completed 100 years of, you know, 100 years in India. Of course, you know, Bosch, uh, many would be aware that Bosch is very, very strong in the mobility space. When I say mobility, it is to do with automobiles. Uh, I'm sure you would have come across Parkplex, for example, 
the ABS uh, or let's say um, you know the issues in the car or the diesel pumps, for example, all this form you know, a part of mobility solutions. But there is also a non-mobility business in Bosch uh, where we come from. You know, we come from this business unit called building technologies. This building technologies has products like this. So this building technologies is the division where we come from, and this building technologies have products like fire alarm systems, video, which is CCTV, access control, public order system, conference and intrusion systems. So this is part of safety, security, and communication range of products, which falls under this uh, you know, business unit or let's say non-mobility solutions called building technologies. Yeah. And there is also a reason why we wanted to uh, talk to you on this picture. The building that you see here on the left and on the right that you see here uh, is something that we call as smart buildings. Yeah, this was built and uh, you know it was inaugurated, opened by 2022, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 2022. And it was uh, you know, Honorable Prime Minister you know, who opened these buildings, who inaugurated these buildings. Yeah. And this is special to us. You know, the reason being, this is smart buildings. We've been talking of smart city, smart campuses, smart buildings in India since uh, 2019, if I'm not wrong, or 2018, roughly. Uh, but there are not too many smart buildings. But uh, here we take pride. Uh, this is a thought that we sort of you know, had for us in 2019. And today we have a building which is you know, really smart. And uh, we do a tour of this you know, campus for our, all our customers. So in case if you are interested to see why this building is called smart, right from the, from the point of entry, uh, you would see everything smart here. Uh, we, we've been doing a tour of these buildings to our customers. In case if someone is interested, please do let us know and we'll be able to do a tour to you. And using this tool, you will, we will also be able to showcase to you our products, which is fire, CCTV, access control, and public order system. And we'll tell you how this product can make this building really smart. Yeah. Now, since we know that Bosch is 100 years in India, can you take a guess of how old is this business fire? Fire celebrated 100 years in 2020. Yeah, we started this business in 1920, somewhere in Germany, and uh, you know we are in we are in 2023. We're about 103 years old, roughly. Yeah, uh, in this business. So there are very few manufacturers of fire alarm systems who have this experience to talk about. So before I really talk about the products, before we talk about what is it for you, for your offices, for your buildings. I just want to spend a minute to talk about this, uh, to play this video for you. And this video has got a lot of keywords. And if you could quickly, uh, you know, make a note of few keywords, this is something that we will talk about throughout in the presentation. Yeah. And every keyword uh, has a meaning towards it. And every time we run through slides, we will talk about this, spend a minute on talk, you know, to talk about each of these keywords. Take a look, please. Bosch Fire Alarm Systems offers a comprehensive portfolio of reliable and future-proof safety systems. From panels and detectors to software solutions to improve operations. Intelligent solutions based on innovative technologies such as AI and smart sensors to reliably alarm only in genuine emergencies. Solutions that also protect your investment by ensuring compatibility across the entire system. Tested beyond requirements and trusted worldwide. From offices and commercial buildings to industry, healthcare, hotels and logistics. Our solutions protect people and assets and ensure business continuity. Bosch Fire Alarm Systems. Smarter against fire. Smarter against fire. And a lot of keywords in it. I'm sure you would have made a note of all those keywords and we'll quickly talk about that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, with our experience with uh, fire systems, you know, we have got an option. I mean, we, we've got an opportunity to talk to a lot of safety managers, a lot of HSE managers, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, team members who are part of, let's say, you know, fire, for example. We have spoken to them across different verticals and industries, yeah? And this is something that always comes to us. You know, whenever we go talk to them, they only tell us these four important things, which really uh, means a lot to them, uh, matters a lot to them. So whenever you ask a safety manager of what the four key goals are, this is what comes to his mind uh, to talk about. One, he wants to make sure the, the people in the building, the assets in the building, uh, and the building itself to be safe and secure, yeah? And of course, business continuity is very, very important. I, 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 I am sure you guys have come across this topic many a times because installing file system is so easy, but to maintain and have to uh, and having it really work for you 
uh, with false alarms means a lot yeah and uh, this is something that we promise that we talk about business continuity whenever we talk about our file alarm systems yeah minimize risk and of course complete a lot of policies that we have when i say policies file alarm industry is governed by a lot of standards so so to say you know uh, product standards uh, let's say installation standards and of course you know the building code that is in the country as well so you'll have to compare to all all these policies and with our file alarm system we tick all the four boxes here yeah we make sure that we live up to your expectation on these four aspects and we try to help you achieve all these four key goals i don't want to read the text in this slide but uh, i'm i'm sure from the picture you understand there's a different fire that has you know uh, that has happened uh, in the pharmaceutical industry in the last decades for example yeah i'm not here to talk about this four pictures that i see here on the screen but i want to tell you something you know it is very common in india that at least uh, once in two weeks you now we been talking about uh, some fire accident anywhere in the country maybe in the hospitals or somewhere in uh, the production plants for example at least once in two weeks there it is on the national media which means it is it is the accident is really huge it's really big that we talk about this in the national media but the lot of fire accidents that doesn't make it to the national media it probably stays within the local media the problem the meaning is we have almost a fire accident every day yeah it is important of we having not just the fire alarm system but also a good fire protection system in total detection protection and also suppression is an important aspect but thanks to the awareness that we have spread in this uh, industry in this country i think after 2020 uh, roughly about 2011 and 2010 things have really got better uh, the industry has become much more professional the customers have been installing real good fire alarm systems fire suppression systems fire protection systems and frequent audits and the association's help and the uh, experts in fire are making it really nice things are getting better with in, in the coming days of course we shouldn't see any such fire accidents in the media or any such fire accident shouldn't happen in any of our plants that's that's uh, uh, that's something that i would wish that we have in this industry we have in this country yeah all right now coming to specific pharma industry yeah um why is it different when we talk about fire alarm system for a regular office building or a regular manufacturing site it's it's way different than what we talk about fire alarm system in a pharmaceutical industry so this is this is slightly different because uh the the buildings the infrastructure for example uh, in the pharmaceutical typically is high ceiling yeah and um, you've got a mixed space meaning you have a production office uh, and a production plant soon after the production plant next to it you probably have a, a raw material warehouse and then you also have the finished good warehouse and then you probably have an office admin office next to it and it is all together the ceiling is uh, at, at different heights for example the production plant is normally double height ceilings and your warehouses for example also would be double height maybe the office space is not so yeah and the buildings would be uh, half open half occupied uh, some may not be uh, really so well occupied yeah it's it's different at different times you know different places yeah and uh, of course you know for your production you also tend to handle a lot of flammable liquids and gases as part of your production process yeah and dust is a bigger problem uh, in the plant meaning uh, as part of your production you also have a lot of chemical dust that is in in and around the air and that is to be handled as well really well yeah and of course your finished products are then getting stored in the warehouses yeah which is again uh, maybe uh, not so flammable but your raw materials are definitely flammable uh, and uh, when you really don't take take good care of it then there are chances that you know this would turn into an explosion therefore you have an environment like an office a very very simple then you probably have a substation and then you have a manufacturing setup then you have a formulation space and then you have a warehouse things are different at different places and therefore it calls for a different file alarm system a uh, different type of a file alarm system in all these environments lakshmi if i can call you here uh, i mean i'm going to show roughly about 12 or 14 different uh, use cases here and this use use cases are nothing but challenges and with challenges and then i'm going to talk about solutions so before i get into that uh, if you if we can just quickly talk about those two poll questions poll questions yes can we have the poll on the screens please now we have a second poll on all of your screens please take a look at it and do participate in it i'll read out the uh, poll for all of you which are the two most challenging applications in your plant regarding the detection the option options are as follows admin areas formulation facilities clean rooms warehouses and storage rooms semi open areas specialized production processes example gas detection please make your choice the poll will stay on your screens for about 30 seconds
I'll also like to urge all of you to post your questions using the chat box. Our speaker will address the questions one by one after the presentation. Can we have the results of the poll, please? So we have the results. Admin areas have received about 10 percent. Um, you know, on the poll, the poll has given us the answers. Uh, 10 percent for admin areas. It's 35 percent for formulation facilities. Clean rooms have been selected by 27% of our audience. Warehouses and storage rooms is the answer for about 67% of our audience. Semi-open areas have been chosen by 17% of our audience. And 38% of our audience have chosen specialized production processes, example, gas detection. Mr. Rajkumar, I'll hand it over to you if you want to comment anything on this poll. Actually, do we have another question after this? Or... Sure, we can go to our next poll. Can we have the next poll on our screens, please? Our next poll is also on your screen. If any, which is the biggest challenge with your current fire detection system? Your choices are too many false alarms. False alarms. Second one is difficult maintenance. The third one is lack of protection in outdoor areas. And the fourth one is missing integration with evacuation system. As before, please vote. The poll will stay on your screen for 30 seconds. Can we have the answers, please? The results of this poll are as follows. The first option, that's too many false alarms, have been chosen by 49% of our audience. Difficult maintenance is the choice for about 18% of our audience. Lack of protection in outdoor areas gets 5%. Missing integration with evacuation system is the choice for 28% of our audience. Mr. Rajkumar, do you want to comment on this? Yes. Thanks, Lakshmi. I will talk about this as we progress. Thanks, Lakshmi. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we, we haven't introduced the product of Bosch yet. Yeah. But we still want to do this. We want to talk about the challenge and then we simply introduce our products then and there uh, and i'm sure I, we will address most of your challenges in the next 12 or 13 14 slides roughly yeah so i'll read the challenge here office and administration areas are exposed to an increased fire risk to their proximity to production and storage facilities of pharma pharmaceutical products which are often highly combustible so i said this earlier as well you know your buildings are very complex meaning you have a production plan quickly after the production plan you probably have a warehouse and next to the warehouse is your office space yeah so now, now um, say suppose if a fire breaks out in the office space, for example, now there are very good chances that this fire could spread to the production area and also to the warehouse in no time. And uh, this is even more riskier, meaning if the fire breaks out in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the storage area or for example, in the production plant, yeah, now you've got great systems installed there. But in the office space, you normally miss on few things. Yeah? Now, if there is a fire that breaks out in the office space and if that spreads to these areas, then it is also riskier. Now, how do we do it? Yeah, what 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 does what does Bosch have to offer? So Bosch, we have a detector which we call it Avina, Avina 4000. Now I'm sure you've heard in the market that this industry has uh, smoke, uh, heat, and multi-sensor. When I say multi-sensor, it's a combination of smoke and heat. Yeah. Either you have an option of smoke detectors or a heat detector and then a combination of smoke and heat. Bosch has all the three to offer, but we want to be slightly different to what the industry does. And this, this brings a lot of value add to you. Bosch has a special detector called dual ray. It's called Avenar is a family. Within the family, we have a detector called dual ray, which is dual ray optical, dual ray optical thermal, which is heat and smoke, and dual ray optical thermal and chemical, which is smoke, heat, and chemical sensor as well. Now, what does it mean? It means, um, yeah, how do I put dual rays better than the traditional detectors? So I, I saw it in the poll that you had a lot of false alarm in your installations, right? Now, if I can call this dual ray, dual ray is false alarm resistant. How to how much? I would probably rate it to 99.99 percentage. Yeah, that's a nice number to have, but it is false alarm resistant. Yeah, which means it's highly readable. In case of a real fire, it picks up alarm in no time. In case if there's no if there's if there's a dust for example if there's a dirt if there's a steam from any of your you know, other processes for example 
this detector can understand what is steam, what is dust, what is dirt, what is cigarette smoke differently and, and, and not react to it as an alarm. Yeah, it stays calm. Yeah, so this detector is highly reliable at the same time very, very fast. The results are this. This dual detectors can be put on the, you can put it in the office space and this can detect fire really faster. Yeah, at the same time, it does not give you false alarms. So faster and reliable is Aminar dual ray detectors. Yeah. And the next challenge. In the formulation process in your plants, yeah, in which different chemical substances are combined to produce a final pharmaceutical product, you know, have high fire and explosion hazards due to combustible dust and flammable liquids. Now, what do you do then? The key word here is combustible dust. Yeah. Dust is something that you probably cannot live without in the pharmaceutical plant. And I say dust, it is of course the chemical dust I'm talking about. And for example, in a steel plant, then it is a, it's a real dust. Yeah. Now here, these two areas, uh, the reason I bring, brought the steel plant and the pharmaceutical is because of the dust. Yeah. It is very tough to have a fire alarm system, uh, which, is, which is sort of maintained really well yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm sure you many, many would accept the fact that fire alarm system when installed, when I say fire alarm system, the smoke detectors are the multi-sensors. After it is installed, it also needs a lot of maintenance. Yeah, to be to be really nice, it has to work well in the site without any false alarms. Uh, then of course you'll have to clean them often and keep keep them up to date. Yeah. Now, how do you do it? So as part of the maintenance process, probably you do cleaning once in 15 days or once a month, and and and, and therefore you upkeep the system. But here we slightly want to be different. Yeah, the difference is this. Yeah, the difference is here. So in the Bosch detector, normally what happens, you know, when you remove the detector from the ceiling, you would probably spray it with a compressed air and then you call it cleaning. Yeah, I mean, when I say you, the, the, the system degraders or the industry experts would always blow a compressed air from outside and say it's clean. But in our opinion, it is not done really well. So what do we do? When you remove the Bosch detector, just begin the detector, we have a small plug, a rubber plug, which you pull it out. Yeah. Once you pull out the plug, you can actually see the smoke chamber for yourself. And we want you to throw the compressed air from inside, from outside, so that you do the cleaning inside out. It will take away all the all the dust out of the smoke detector, which means what? You probably would need less maintenance. Yeah. And whenever you're doing any maintenance, please be rest assured you're doing a thorough maintenance of you know cleaning detectors. It is important. Suppose if you don't clean the detectors and if there is dust deposits within the smoke chamber, the detector is intelligent enough to adjust the threshold to a higher level, which means it gets less sensitive in case of a real fire. It is probably not picking up real fire faster. Yeah. Therefore, to you'll have to keep the detector really clean and nice so that you know the sensitivity is maintained at the same time the detector responds to a real good fire faster. Now, in this case, a chamber made plug is a mechanical feature. But I take pride in saying this, Bosch is the only manufacturer to offer a plug in every detector that we have for you to clean it really easy. And that makes a lot of difference. Suppose if you're cleaning detectors once in 15 days, just because you have this plug and if you're cleaning it from inside out, probably you can clean it once in 30, 30 days now. Yeah, it makes a difference. At the same time, as I, earlier, as I said earlier, we do have detectors, which is just not optical smoke. It also it is heat. It is also multi-sensor. And multi-sensors with chemical sensor is an option that we do have as part of our portfolio. Yeah. Coming to the third challenge, I'm sure not many would have heard of this, but you would have experienced it for sure. You would not have discovered, you would not have realized that it is because of this. Many pharmaceutical plants struggle with a high number of false alarms due to electromagnetic disturbance values. I'm sure you know, never heard of this, leading to trouble in operations and a bad plant performance. Yeah, Trust me, not many industry experts also know this. I'll just give you an example. On a, on a weekend, let's say on a Saturday or a Sunday, let's say the system degrader or the service provider cleans all the smoke detectors installed in the premises. They put it back in place, make a, ma make a maintenance report, get it signed, and they exit the premises. On a Monday, when you when you resume office, when you resume production, all of a sudden there is a false alarm from one of the detectors. Yeah, and and you'll be now puzzled out. I mean, because we just cleaned it last week, and I mean, just one day before we cleaned the detectors, how is there a false alarm now? False alarms need not necessarily be from you know dirt and dust. It can also be from electromagnetic interferences. Electromagnetic interferences are not seen, but it is experienced by the detector. If I have to call one device very poor in the ceiling of yours, it is the smoke detector. The reason this is the only device that works on 24 volts DC, 
with few micro milliamperes. The rest of the other devices in your ceiling, for example, you talk about Wi-Fi routers to electrical cables to PA system to lights to whatnot, to your machinery, everything works at AC to 30 volts or you know, three phase for 40 volts or whatever. Yeah, this is the only device that works at 20 volts DC, which means what? This is sub subjected to a lot of electromagnetic interference in and around by a lot of other machinery in your plant. And therefore, if not today, two years or three years or four years down the line, this detector will start giving you false alarms because of electromagnetic interference. So electromagnetic interference is something that we have not, uh, you know, you guys have not seen it for, for yourself, but this is definitely there and that's affecting our detectors, right? Now, what do we do differently in Bosch? Of course, again, I take pride in saying this, Bosch is the only manufacturer to offer an e-smog feature that you see here in all our detectors. In all the detectors that you buy, it's, it's a standard feature, which means what? The detector gets installed today. It is able to read the interference in the room and report the value to the panel real time live. Now, let's say it's installed and after the 90th day, when you come to the site, the system will now give you two reports, which is the current value of interference plus the average interference value over the last 90 days. Yeah, which means what? The system, the panel looks after the interference of all the detectors in and around installed within the panel network. Yeah, point one. Now, for example, this is installed, handed over to you, let's say third year down the line, for example, for whatever reasons you feel that the light in this room is not enough. You want to have additional lamps and you're trying to pull a fire cable, sorry, a, a electrical cable next to a smoke detector, which is not allowed by standards. Let's say for whatever reasons, because you don't have an option, you're running a power cable next to the smoke detector. If there is interference, this smoke detector will quickly send a value to the panel saying yesterday's value was so much and today the value is this much, which means the value has jumped and it is not good for the detector to be working there. Now, what is expected is when there's a warning appearing on the fire alarm panel as, as a fire technician or as a fire system operator, the operator is expected to make sure that the detector is free from interference. Therefore, it can work with the panel for the customer for many years to come. Yeah, If it is exposed to continuous interference, obviously in, in one year or two years down the line, on one day it's going to give off and you may not know the reason why this, is, so this has gone faulty or whatever. Yeah? So the point here is electromagnetic interference is a big topic but it is never spoken because it is not seen. That's it. But this affects the system and the detectors in a bigger way. And Bosch has addressed it somewhere in 2000, 2018, if not 2017 or 18, if I'm not wrong. And this has become a standard feature of all our detectors today. Looking at the time, I'm just quickly wanting to run slides. Machinery and equipment in quality control labs and R&D areas are typically of very high value and therefore need reliable protection. But the rules regarding dust and dirt are very strict in these areas. This picture on the right looks like a clean room. Now, in a clean room, when you install a regular smoke detector, it means it needs a lot of maintenance, as I said, said it in the earlier slides. Yeah. Now, when it comes to regular smoke detectors, uh, if you if this has to be cleaned, uh, for example, let's say your lab is getting fumigated, for example, or you may have to let me inside to clean the detectors, and I'm sure you're not happy letting me in or probably uh, you know cleaning the detectors. Now, how do we do it? Bosch has an option called invisible detectors, which I'm going to show to you later. It is flush mount, ultra flush mount detectors. Yeah, uh, it, it is probably just like a light, for example, in your ceiling, or it's just like a speaker, for example, in your ceiling. It is flush mount. How does it work? It does the work. This detector has roughly about eight watts and so many patents now for this product. And it's, we launched this in 2004. So it's almost a 20 year old product that we're talking about. So this invisible detector finds application, especially in two areas, which is you know, uh, clean rooms and you know, pharmaceutical and then operation theaters in hospitals. Two critical areas. This definitely would be required. You will see it in some time. Now, we are again talking about clean rooms. Yeah, we are talking about clean rooms. Again, in clean rooms, invisible fire detectors can be a great option. You see, look at the lights here. Yeah, and you look at the detector here on the ceiling. So here, I mean, I'm not too sure how many can see this. Yeah, but this detector is, is, is not preferred by customers today. The reason is this definitely needs cleaning in a clean room like this. If I have to clean this, uh, then of course, you know, I'm going to throw some compressed air and things like that, and that could affect the, uh, the, the room itself. So how, do, how, does the, how does the invisible detector look? It would look like a light, I mean, flush mount, just like, uh, you know, uh, just like the light, it will be flush mounted. So, and the most important thing is the surface of the invisible detector is, is sort of dirt repellent and dust repellent. So dust doesn't settle on it in case if it is dirty, the cleaning would be so easy. All that you would need is just wipe off the wipe off the face of the detector, and that's the cleaning it, it would need. Nothing else. In case if you're not okay with an invisible detector for whatever reasons, can we do? Can we be a bit more smarter? Yes. Bosch also has a product called Aviotech, which is video-based fire detection. 
you install a camera in the corner of the room yeah and this camera detects smoke and also flame and does it really fast yeah it is faster than any other traditional detectors meaning suppose a flame detection would happen roughly in about let's say about 10 seconds and a smoke detection roughly about 16 to 18 20 seconds roughly yeah based on the smoke but it does that really really fast as compared to the traditional detectors so and again abutic is like fit and forget you don't need maintenance for this it just it, there's no maintenance for an abutic detector except that you might probably need to clean the optics or the lens once in a few months or something like that but otherwise abutic is again a fit and forget product you don't need maintenance for this likewise invisible detector also is a fit and forget you don't need maintenance for this as well yeah the next challenge is your warehouses yeah either finished good or let's say raw materials it's, it's typically high ceiling yeah now what do we do how do we detect fire faster here you've got the traditional options which is the beam detectors a beam detector on one side you have a transmitter the other side you have a receiver a transmitter is transmitting a invisible beam to the receiver in case of any fire the smoke goes up to the ceiling and smoke cuts the beam and beam detector picks up an alarm traditional way of how it works we do have it to offer yes now the next best way is to offer as aspiration smoke detector how does it work it's a box installed in the corner of the room with a fan with a with a high power detector yeah highly powerful detector and then you have a pvc tube that connects the detector to the room on the ceiling and this pipe is drilled with smaller openings so what are we doing we're trying to suck the air from the room and sample this in the detector within the detector yeah and in case of any smoke then the detector picks up an alarm really fast this is nice aspiration is nice can we can can we have something better and of course again introducing you aviotech aviotech is bosch video based fire detection camera it's a it's a normal video camera installed in the corner of the room to detect smoke and flame especially for high ceiling applications it does fire detection really really quick and fast you'll see it in the coming slides the picture of the product now look at this picture this picture uh, you know uh, sort of a semi uh, storage area right can you think of a fire alarm system for this can you think of a fire detector for this yeah not many traditional systems can be used here because there is so much wind smoke cannot stay there smoke would be taken away by the wind for example so detectors would not even detect smoke when you put it on the ceiling yeah then what do we do what do we do abiotech the video based fire detection system can do the job for a semi outdoor application yeah put this camera on the on, on the ceiling or on the wall it detects flame and smoke really quick yeah so abiotech is both indoor and also an outdoor device yeah it can be used for a semi outdoor application for now next challenge some areas maybe your raw material warehouse let's say have a high risk of explosions due to the materials used and the process are performed what do we have bosch has to offer we have the explosion proof smoke heat multi sensor and also we have explosion from proof flame detectors and explosion proof manual call points to pick up smoke and 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 uh, in in areas which are classified let's say zone 2 for example in all these areas you may go for an x proof device and bosch has it to offer we have it as part of our portfolio to give it to you yeah carbon monoxide gas might be discharged during the process and then it, it puts the life to of the staff in danger yeah we know this carbon monoxide is odorless yeah and it is harmful as well can be detected yes do you need a special detector the answer is no the bosch multi sensor that we talked about which is optical thermal and the chemical sensor yeah has a co sensor inbuilt which is good enough to detect co within the room if there is a leakage of co for example this detector can pick up that as well and and and, and report an alarm yeah possible so in um, in in few areas within the pharmaceutical plant you know uh, some areas you you might need some specific detectors where you uh, don't want to where the detector should not start an ignition due to hazardous gas, gases or chemical dust you know you need detectors which are intrinsically safe yeah um this is something that we do not have to offer bosch doesn't have an intrinsically safe detector to offer but a lot of our channel partners a lot of our channel partners they source intrinsically safe detectors from the market and we do have an option to integrate them to the fire alarm panel of bosch yeah say suppose you need an intrinsically safe detector but not an x proof x proof is something that bosch has to offer but in case if you only need an intrinsically safe we can source it from the market and then we have a special module we call the CZIM and through this module it integrates with the fire alarm panel seamlessly yeah and therefore any of your applications any of your labs if you need an intrinsically safe it can very well be connected to the Bosch same fire, fire alarm system as well yeah another question now this is something that we have experienced in India when we did, we did a lot of uh, pharmaceutical plants you know 
when you when you when you go to a new plant for example it is built let's say for example four to five buildings are built now and they buy a fire alarm system which is very well installed and handed over but two years down the line they will go for an additional warehouse or they go for an additional plant now after two years when you buy another system from the market there are very good chances that the new system is not we, there is no i mean there's less possibility of new system getting integrated with the old system yeah the reason being um backward compatibility is something that not many players would talk about but bosch is something that we keep talking about this very often backwards and upwards compatibility meaning if i just quickly give you one example a fire alarm system that is installed by bosch in 2005 can very well be connected to the existing fire alarm system of bosch today yeah that we call this backward compatibility a customer who has a 2000 a system that is bought in 2005 and if they are really if they're buying a product from us today this system can very well be integrated with the system that was bought in 2005. We're talking about backwards compatibility. Yeah. Now, let's say a customer wants to buy a detector, which would be launched in 2030, but still wants to connect that new detector to the existing panel of to the to the panel that was supplied in 2023. Is that a possibility? The answer is yes as well. So Bosch, whenever we launch a product, we have, we make sure that it is backwards compatible and it is also forward compatible as well. So we please be rest assured that the system that you buy would 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 be of use to you even after 10 years or 15 years. Yeah, I talked about an example of 2005 and 2023, close to close to 20 years now already. This example, uh, I, I mean, this question, of course, many, many have asked me, especially in the pharmaceutical industry, the plant is always in a remote area outside the city. When I say this, most of the channel partners, most of the OEMs, most of the industry players are, are present in the city. Now, if you have to ask, Ask them for some support in terms of maintenance or in terms of uh, uh, let's say you know troubleshooting and if it's really if, if it has to be really quick the many a times you know when it comes to plants like pharmaceutical it is always not really quick it, it takes some time the reason someone has to come from a city to a uh, to a you know, outside it outside the city area or probably to a rural area to address this now can we do it slightly differently in the case of bosch yes bosch has something called as remote services so a file system installed in your premises can be connected to the Bosch cloud. And I'm in Bangalore. If I have to connect to your system and troubleshoot this, I can do it myself. Yeah. Now, if I have to do a maintenance, let's say we agreed to do a maintenance this Saturday. Yeah. Now, before I come, I would log into the remote services of Bosch, go through the go through the cloud, yeah, understand the problems in your system, and I get prepared with whatever I have to carry from Bangalore, for example. I come to your site, troubleshoot the entire system, put it back in place and also fill the entire report on an iPad, for example, and people, whoever is connected to the file alarm system, let's say the end user, the facility manager, um, let's say the MD of the company, for example, uh, I as a system degrader, and let's say the OEM has to pay, get in, get involved as well. All of us can get a report of what has happened in the site. Yeah, and this is a living document. You know, I've done a document today. Now, let's say I've come after one month after for a regular maintenance, or I come after three months, for example, that this document can always be referred. So which means I can remotely connect and troubleshoot a system in case if you have a problem so without the need of me visiting the site. That is one. Second, on, on, in, in case if I have to do a, a maintenance activity, I can come prepared with whatever is required and, and I can do this in no time. And everyone connected gets a report of it. Yeah. At the same time, you also would get an SMS or an email alert of what has happened. Maybe trouble, maybe fire. It comes to you as SMS, it comes to you as email. Or if you want to have it in an app, for example, Bosch also has an app called Remote Intract. You get all the notifications of the Fire Alarm system on the app, be it iOS or Android as well. Yeah, And that, this remote services is something not new that, uh, that we're talking. This again was launched in 2019, if I'm not wrong. And we've done a lot of installations in India with remote services as well. Yeah. So how Bosch can be different to your needs? Yeah. So Bosch, we talked about this product called Avenar. Yeah. Avenar is one product that we sell across the globe. It's, it's the file alarm system that we call it as, and this is a product that we sell across the globe. Yeah, Bosch doesn't have a second portfolio to sell, which means what? Um, you know, rest be assured that you're buying the best of products from us. Yeah, and this product is is completely modular. Yeah, modular meaning you have let's say a cafeteria which where you need a one loop panel. Avenar 8000 can be customized as a one loop panel to be offered. Yeah, now you have a, a big plan which calls for let's say 20 loop panel. Avenar 8000 with the 20 loop panel is a possibility. It's a modular system. So smaller setups to a bigger, large factories, Bosch Avenar 8000 can be your solution. Yeah. 
and we talked about 100 years of experience. So I want to tell you this. We have a customer, for example, if I, I can quote their name here, Shoba Developers, now who's a, which is a, a residential uh, a build of example in South. Yeah, They've been buying our systems for 10 long years. And JSW, JSW Steel Plant, they've been buying our systems for you know, 15 years now. Yeah, So that's the kind of reliability that we uh, give them in terms of how do we handle false alarms. Yeah, really nice. And remote services, which is a futuristic solution. You know, when I say additional remote services, it looks like remote services to you. But to, to make it nice, to talk about the smart, smart buildings, to talk about uh, Internet of Things, IoT, remote services is an IoT thing. Yeah, A file alarm system connected to the cloud, you get to see, I mean, of course, you have not seen it in the demo, but whenever you're here, whenever I'm there in your office, we can do this. You get to see a multi-sensor installed in your lab on the cloud, on the on the website, you will be able to read the temperature of that detector in that room. Yeah. And you'll also be able to read the analog values and the interference values of that detector in that portal. Yeah. So we take things to the next level, futuristic solutions. And that is why we think we're always better than the rest in terms of being modular, reliable, and also very futuristic as far as solutions is concerned. Yeah. We've got everything here in the slide that you see here. This is a schematic. It can be as cumbersome as this. A file lamp panel. Yeah, you talk about the invisible detectors, aspiration systems, video-based camera, invisible detector again, all-in-one sounders, public address system, remote services, yeah, repeater panels. Yeah, you talk about Bosch has everything to offer. In, in short, I want to tell you that we've got everything in this slide to offer from us. Our portfolio is really big and we can do it here. Yeah, quickly talking about the panel, we call this Avenar. We have two products, Avenar 8000 and 2000. 2000 is a one loop panel expandable up to four. Avenar 8000 is a one loop panel expandable up to 32. Yeah, just to give you a summary of this, the industry average is roughly about 12 loop panel and Bosch can already do 32 loops. Yeah. Now you talk about redundancy, say suppose this is a controller. Now in case if this controller fails, what happens to the file alarm system could be a question. Bosch can offer you controller redundancy. Can we offer loop redundancy? Yes. Can we offer power supply redundancy? Yes. Can we offer networking redundancy? The answer is yes. Yeah. You demand and we have a solution to give you. Yes. And then this is the detector that we talked about. The Avena series, 4000 series detectors. This is how it looks like. Yeah. Now all the Bosch detectors would look like this. And if I have to say something, this detector has an inbuilt processor, and this processor has 5,005 patents. 100 years of our research, we understand different fires differently. A paper fire, a plastic fire, chemical fire, a oil fire, a different, let's say, for example, Akbati smoke, steam coming out of the kitchen, for example, or as part of your process. Yeah, they are, they are very different, but they look like smoke. Can this detector handle all this? Yes. This detector has been trained with 5,000 fire patterns to understand fire really fast and also understands how to handle false alarms better as well at the same time. And this also has the feature of e smog in terms of reading the interference in and around the detector. The very popular invisible detector. Yeah, you, this is the regular detector which protrudes out of the ceiling. And this is a detector which we're talking about, which is flush mode. Yeah, it's flush mode. And all that you need is cleaning is like this. The surface that you see here is dirt repellent surface. Of course, it doesn't attract dust. Yeah. In case if it's dirty or dusty, there is a sensor here in the center of the director which calls for maintenance. And if there is a maintenance that is called, then cleaning is just this. You'll have to take a piece of cloth, wipe it off, and that's the maintenance that would be required. Yeah. Now you also understand that we can give you detectors of different colors. So this director, as I rightly said, it is for uh, in a clean rooms in a pharmaceutical uh, plant. But at the same time, let's say you have a nice uh, looking room. Uh, aesthetically, you want a detector that should look nice. You can buy this detector and you ask for color, blue, green, red, yellow, yeah, whatever color, or you have your own color scheme. Please give us, we print some three screens and we put it in the detector and this detector gets camouflaged in the ceiling and then you don't see it at all. Yeah, And that's why this gets a name called invisible detectors. Another nice uh, product from us, uh, recently launched, we call this Aminar All-in-One. What does it mean? A sounder. A, sorry, a sounder, a flasher, and then a detector, all three in one. Yeah. Now, what is the spe specialty of this? The specialty is, of course, all in one is again a new thing in the industry. But the, 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 the reason it is so special is because it has a battery, which is lithium ion battery, yeah, which is good to work for 10 long years. And it doesn't draw for, for it to work, let's say in case of an alarm, for the strobe to work or for the flasher to work or for the sounder to work, it doesn't draw any power from the file panel. It takes power from the lithium ion battery itself yeah and therefore we call this loop powered sounders and it also 
can have up to, I mean, you can also have up to 125 devices in a loop. It's a breakthrough. The reason is whenever you call a loop forward device, yeah, the problem is uh, you cannot have more than 10 in a loop because it takes a lot of power and it brings down the, um, you know, the current in the loop and therefore you cannot travel a distance. Whereas with this kind of predictor, that's the answer that you get. 125 devices in a loop is a possibility, which means you can cover a lot of smaller rooms in the factory yeah, uh, with, with, to be installed with a detector, sounder, and a flasher. Just go for it. Possible. And then aspiration system that we talked about. You know, in one of the examples of warehouses, we said there is a box installed with a, you know, there is a fan within. A PVC tube connects to this aspiration box, and the PVC tube is drilled with openings. So this fan sucks the air. Now, what is special? Every every other player in the industry has it, but what is special about this? This is a direct addressable device, which is which means it is part of the loop, and the entire system is programmable from the fire alarm system only. So whatever happens in the aspiration system is seen in the fire alarm panel, which is not the case with few players or many players in the industry. Yeah. Linear heat detectors. Say suppose you have a cable gallery running from the production area to the to the control room. You have a cable you have a cable uh, tray or a trench, for example, and the cables have to be monitored. This linear heat detectors can do the job. Which this gets installed outside somewhere, and there is a you know a linear heat sensing cable that is run along with the power cable or in the cable. In case if some cable gets punctured and then there is a short circuit, this can pick up the heat and report an alarm really fast. Yeah, that again we have an option. And then beam sensors that we talked about for the warehouse. We have beam sensors of different kinds, and Bosch can can give you options as well. 100 meters, one side, uh, you know, fixed detector, transmitter, and receiver, and the other side is a prism. Or you want to have detector transmitter, which is also motorized, where you want to control the entire thing from the bottom, from the from the floor, for example. That's possible as well. Yeah. X-proof portfolio uh, in your zone two areas. If you need an explosion-proof multi-sensor or a flame detector or a manual call point, again, Bosch has to offer. We do have solutions of that kind as well. Yes, the most interesting product, 2017-18 launch. This is already, the, the one that you see here in the picture is the second generation camera, which we officially launched it last week. Yeah. This camera does the job of fire detection, uh, both smoke and flame, and the time taken is so less, it is probably the fastest fire detector, smoke detector in the industry today. Especially uh, you know, suited for high ceiling applications, high ceiling applications, maybe warehouses, um, production areas, production plants, you can go for it. And this detector can do a much better job than an aspiration system or a beam detector. Yeah. And the best thing, you know the real cause of fire because you have this installed. Yeah. So if there's a fire that breaks out, probably you know why and where the fire started. Many a times, uh, you probably would deploy a team of people to understand how did the fire break out. But here in this case, when you have a camera installed, of course, you have the video feed coming in and it's getting recorded somewhere else in the CCTV system if, if required. Or you can put an SD card within the camera. The camera keeps recording the video within the camera itself. And this connects to, the, to any CCTV system. And this connects to the fire alarm panel at the same time as well, both indoor and also for sheltered outdoor applications. Um, here we are talking about a few references. You know, When I say references uh, in a public forum like this, we do not talk about all our projects. Wherever we've received the customer's permission to display, we are only talking about such references here. Yeah, Lupin Pharma is one of the installations in uh, Gujarat that was recently done. Yeah, and I just want to read this for you. Our new fire detection system that is from the customer. Our new fire detection system relieves our stress levels as we no longer experience excessive false alarms at work. This is from the operations team of Lupin. Yeah, this is robust, durable fire detection system from the maintenance team of Lupin. And, and uh, ask me how many projects have we done in the pharmaceutical uh, vertical in India? I would I would probably say close to some 150 plus projects in India is something that we've done. And this is another pharma reference from Germany, uh, from our uh, home. Hexel AG is another reference in in Germany. Right now, uh, of course, this QR codes that you see here uh, will take you to the Bosch uh, pharmaceutical page. And also would take you to the Bosch portal where you can get to see a lot of brochures of ours. Given the time, 30, 40 minutes is what I have spoken. I tried to capture most of it and most of it was always one way. I did not probably you know, hear questions from you. But um, you, you have my contacts here, you know, email ID and my contact number. So you have a requirement or you probably just want to talk to me on a few things. You know, you can always call me and then I'm here to support you with the answer that we have. In case if I don't have answers, I would obviously go back and then get some answers for you. But uh, give us an opportunity for us to present our products to see if it fits for your requirement in the future whenever you have it. Hmm? Lakshmi, thank you so much. You can take it over, Lakshmi.
Thank you, Mr. Rajkumar. That was a great presentation. Now we have an opportunity uh, the, uh, for the audience to ask our Bosch expert some specific questions about fire detection systems, which are tailored for pharma plants. But before I throw up on the floor for questions, we would like uh, one more poll to come up on our screens. So uh, here is the poll. I'll read out the poll for all of you. Why did you join the call? The options will be to learn about the fire detection portfolio from Bosch, to learn about new technologies regarding fire detection for pharma plants. Bosch is being considered as a possible manufacturer for a fire alarm system in a new facility or as a replacement for an existing system to evaluate alternative solutions for fire detection systems or it was recommended by a peer or a colleague. So these are op your options. Please vote. As before, it will be on your screen for 30 seconds. Thank you for voting. The results will not uh, will help the Bosch team understand your requirements better. I'll now open the floor for questions. We have several questions that have been asked by our audience. I'll take them one by one. Our Bosch expert will answer your questions. So the first question is, how much length has been covered by beam detectors in warehouse areas? Siraj? Yeah. Um... So I mean, on an average, uh, today, the beam detectors can go up to a distance of uh, a maximum of 120 meters. But you also have beam detectors which can which can start from a range of 50, 60 meters up to 100, which is the industry average. But there are also beam detectors that can go up to 120 meters maximum. Yeah. OK, I hope the, uh, that covers the question. And mm -hmm. the next question that we have is, do you have detectors and MCPs for zone 1 as well? Yeah, we do have it, yes. Bosch has detectors and MCPs for zone one also, yeah. Right, I'll move on to the next one. How will you calibrate co-sensor? How do we calibrate? Sensor. Co, -sensor. co -sensor. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I understand why this question has come up. Uh, this is not a standalone CO sensor, so to say, yeah. Uh, therefore, there is no option to calibrate this CO sensor, but this CO sensor works more like a fire detector. Uh, as part of uh, our, our regular multi-sensors, which means, you know, when we have a smoke detector, which is optical, thermal, and a chemical all built within one piece, uh, this is called as OTC, uh, optical, thermal, and chemical. So the primary job of this is to detect fire. Yeah. So whenever there's a fire that breaks out, there is also some carbon monoxide that comes out of the, as part of the combustion, and that goes to the ceiling much faster than a smoke detector would do. Yeah. And CO sensor in the within the detector would pick up this really fast, and, and helps the smoke and the heat sensor to be really quick and fast in terms of detecting fire. And therefore, this is this is not actually working as a standalone CO sensor. It is working more with the optical and the thermal detector to detect fire. And that's the primary job of a smoke detector, I mean, of this chemical sensor. Okay. Our next question is, are smoke detectors and sprinklers available compatible with the classified area? Uh, can you just read the question one you more want time? To repeat the question. Yes. Yeah. The question is: Are smoke detectors and sprinklers available compatible with classified area? Sprinklers, Jinesh, do you get this question, Jinesh? Do you understand this, Jinesh? Yeah, uh, Raj. Actually, we have only smoke detectors, and we don't manufacture the sprinkler. Yeah, so okay. the, the fire protection system would be different as compared to fire detection system. So Bosch is only into the fire detection area, and we do not have a sprinkler solution available with us. Okay, okay. Okay, I hope that answers the question uh, for the audience. Uh, our next question would be how series 500 slash 520 is different from concealed type detector? No, 500, 520 is nothing but the uh, concealed detector. That's a, that's an invisible okay, detector. That's, concealed. that's a concealed detector. The other one is called Avena 4000, which is a re regular smoke detector, which, which sort of protrudes out of the ceiling. And the one concealed is called 500 520. No, Azraj, uh, just to add in uh, what you said, if 500 is the series in which we have a conventional as well as addressable solutions available. Perfect, and there yeah. are two types. One is the optical type and second one is optical plus chemical. So there are two model numbers available uh, in uh, invisible detector. Yeah, correct. Yeah, maybe I, I think we should we can spend a minute on this. Yeah, uh, for, for everyone's uh, benefit here, Bosch has you know, the invisible detector to offer, which we call this uh, ultra flat flush mount detector. 
Now we have both uh, conventional and also addressable in this. The conventional is 500 and the addressable is called 520. Now, how does conventional help in for the for the audience here? You will all probably already have a phylum system installed in your premises, but uh, maybe of a different manufacturer. But sometimes, let's say in your in your setup, you may not want the regular spot detectors, but you want an invisible ultra flat ultra flush mount detector. Then you can buy the conventional from Bosch and add it to the existing phylum system of yours, which is very different, which is not Bosch system, but is something else. Yeah. So the conventional allows you to install it with a with a with already existing system. So that's a possibility, and therefore you can also, you know, uh, you have an option of buying a conventional range of invisible detectors as well. Okay. Yeah. We'll move on to the next question. Do you have a hydrogen fire detector? Uh, no, Bosch doesn't have a hydrogen detector to fire detector to offer. No, but if there is a if there's a hydrogen fire detector that that is required, then our channel partners, as I rightly said earlier, can source it for you and uh, seamlessly integrate this with the Bosch fire alarm system. That's a possibility. Okay. Uh, does your system have audit trial and 21 part 11 compliance? Which data should not be editable is the question. Um, okay. To be frank, I don't understand what is 21 part 11. I will make a note of this and then I'll come back. But if you ask me, is the data not editable? Of course, the data is not editable. Yeah. Okay. Now, does the system integrate with our existing non-Bosch system? Yeah. Okay. Uh, with respect to fire alarm systems, you know, of course, uh, probably, you know, we've not opened up so much. Uh, let's say you already have a fire alarm system from an X manufacturer and you're buying Bosch, for example, now you want to integrate this together. Uh, it cannot be seamless. You can still do a hardware integration, but it is definitely not seamless. It's not seamless. Now, how do we do it? How, how can we do it seamlessly? You may probably have to introduce a software, which is in the control room. And this software has the capability of integrating with the existing phylum system, which is brand X, for example. And then it can also integrate with Bosch systems. So at the software level, you can have both the systems connected to one platform. But between the system, within the systems, if you ask for a seamless integration, that does, that does not exist within the industry and also with Bosch. Okay. Our next question is how to know if the sensor malfunctions? Of course. Yeah. Uh, so, in, I mean, um, we didn't have the time to display the Bosch uh, screen for you. But in the Bosch screen, uh, it's more like it's a five point, sorry, it's an eight point three inch touchscreen display. Yeah. Now you have a taskbar in the display of Bosch system, like how you have it on your laptop, like the Windows taskbar, and you have an option called status. Yeah. So when you click on this, even before it's confirmed to be a fault, when the system senses there's something going wrong with the detector, for example, a pollution, under the status option, when you click, it gives you that this many detectors are polluted light pollution, mid pollution, high pollution or whatever, you will get it there. And if it, if it was a real good fault, then it, of course, it would appear under the fault menu, which also is on the file I'm display as well. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Uh, is there any guideline for installation of video based fire detection? Yes. I mean, um, uh, yes, I mean, Indian, for example, in India, we have IS 2189. Uh, it doesn't talk about video based fire detection for now. It does not talk about that. But uh, yes, there are global standards which talks about video-based fire detection. Uh, there is a small mention of video-based fire detection in NFPA, and there is also a mention of video-based fire detection in ISO standards as well. Okay. Yeah, but Our not in India. It's two one eight nine. Does not talk about it. Yeah. Right. Moving on to the next question. What is the frequency frequency to clean the sensor? Okay. In case if it's a Bosch detector, uh, it all depends on the uh, the room. Yeah, but but I assume it's a pharmaceutical plant, and uh, if you ask me how how fast or how frequent we'll have to do it, um, if because it's a Bosch detector, I would say probably once in once in two months should be a good duration. Yeah, once okay. in a quarter, would, once in a quarter would still be fine. Yes. Okay. Which beam detector is applicable in movable compactor area in warehouse? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you have something movable within the warehouse, beam detectors cannot be used, and if it's, if, if that moving thing is uh, coming in the pathway of the beam, then obviously uh, I would not propose a beam detector for this installation. Yeah. But for example, uh, within this warehouse, if you ask me if there's something moving crane or a, a movable compact area, then I would probably suggest you uh, an Aviotech video based fire direction as a best option. But if you still insist uh, that we go for a traditional system, then maybe an aspiration system will do the job, but not definitely beam directors. Okay, there's a question. How is the false alarm get uh, generated? How does the false alarm get generated? Uh -huh. Okay, how the false alarm get generated? That's a question. Okay, 
Yeah, false alarm occurs for different reasons. In 2014, there was a study done in the UK and uh, it tells us how, why false alarms happen. So false alarms happen because of dirt and dust primarily. Yeah. Second, it is because of poor insulation. Third, it is because of uh, faulty smoke detectors. And fourth, because of electromagnetic interferences. Now, this is a study that was done. Soon after the study, Bosch looked at this and then we have corrected all of this slowly. With respect to electromagnetic interferences, Bosch has this e-smog feature to offer. Yeah. And with respect to the dirt and dust, Bosch has the dual ray detector to, to give you a solution. And we're talking about smoky, sorry, faulty smoke detectors and uh, we're talking about poor insulation. Uh, the detector, these days detectors are intelligent. When I say intelligent, they have a processor within and I told you it comes with 5000 fire patterns and it has got its own ISP and things like that. So it has a check of how it's working and reports the value to the panel almost real time. Yeah. So if something is going faulty, it reports a code saying, for example, 00x, f, 5 f or something like that. It means it, there is a meaning to it. Let's say a processor has failed, then the director reports the director is faulty because of this processor failure or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So you get it in the you can get it in the panel almost real time. Yeah. Right. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, what's the area in square meter covered by a video fire detector? Yeah. Okay. Um, so video based fire detection camera comes with a, uh, uh, with a with a with a with a very focal lens. Yeah. So it is definitely you know you can adjust the focal length of the camera. Uh, you can make it look narrow. You can make it look wide. Um, it, it's up to you and up to the application as such. But given the uh, standard installation, let's say you put it in the corner of the room where it has about 90 degrees coverage, I would say this camera can look roughly about 45 meters, uh, you know, coverage. Yeah. Uh, also to add on, also to add on, Bosch has a calculator, a video-based fire direction calculator, where suppose you have a drawing. With this drawing, we'll be able to put it inside the calculator and tell you. Uh, what length it can cover and what is the size of the smoke or fire it can detect at different distances. So this calculator can be useful for you when we plan uh, video based fire direction for your application. But roughly to give an answer, with 90 degrees of opening, it can cover 45 meters roughly. Okay. Uh, Raj, just to add in uh, your answer, uh, uh, the calculator also gives the at what height you will place the camera, whether it's a 3 meter, 4 meter, 5 meter, then how much distance it will cover. So it covers okay. both length, height, and uh, width as well. Yeah. Right. We'll move on to the next question. Uh, and this question is, can we use these detectors for petroleum storage area, like PESO? Can we use which detector? Video-based fire detection, is it? These detectors, yeah. So video-based detectors. I, I suppose it's a video-based fire detection, OK. Um, I mean, uh, answer, you ask. Yes, please, Jinesh, please go for it. Yeah. See, currently, we have a first generation camera, uh, which is a normal CC type, a CCS type camera. So that particular camera, you can put, place it in a explosion proof housing, depending upon your requirement, whether it's a 2A, 2B classification, and then you can uh, you can do the solution. And the current camera, which has an inbuilt IR with IP67 housing. So that's only for outdoor. So you have we have to customize the, the solution for a for a petroleum tank area with the help of external uh, X proof housing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next question is, what's the maintenance procedure for fire alarm systems? What is the maintenance procedure for the fire alarm systems? Of course, yeah. Um, I mean, if you ask, if you talk about the maintenance procedure, I mean, this is something that I would like to add on. Uh, we use a, a software called remote programming software to commission a fire alarm system. Yeah. And uh, and of course, the programming software has got a lot of uh, you know, knowledge of what is installed and it has the knowledge of how it is programmed as well. So this software will produce a document, uh, you know, which is also handed over at the time of maintenance. At the, time, at, the term of, at the time of handover, we also give this document to the customer, which tells you what is the quarterly check that you have to do, what is the annual check that you have to do for the panel and for the detectors. Now, if you ask about detectors, of course, it would need maintenance. Yeah, I mean, in terms of cleaning the detectors is important. With respect to fire alarm, uh, you may have to test the cause and effect matrix, for example, or you may want to check the pass up the batteries and things like that. So we have a checklist uh, that is annual quarterly checklist as part of the handover document, which comes from the programming software wash directly to the customer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our next question is, video-based fire, uh, fire detection system is certified on which standards and FLP available? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I, I'm not too sure if, I, if we talked about this earlier, uh, video-based fire detection system, if you ask me if there are standards for this product, uh, not really. You know, there, are not, there are not standards for video-based fire detection yet, except for ISO. Yeah, There are not video-based fire detection standards. Now, what do we do? Uh, 
since we come from Germany, Bosch comes from Germany, uh, we have uh, a lab called VDS, which is very popular as well, which is to the which which has a standard for fire alarm system. And this detector, this camera that we're talking about, is been tested as against VDS standards, and it is also certified VDS as well at the same time. Yeah. And uh, FLP currently not available. Uh, FLP is flame proof, Raj. Yeah. So currently we do not have a flame proof uh, camera available. Uh, as I said earlier, you can place the normal first generation uh, aviotech camera in X proof housing to make it flame proof uh, applicable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our next question is, uh, there are few areas that need to be washed frequently. Can you suggest a detector for such areas? Is it is it uh, okay when they say washed frequently? I I understand it's going to be fumigation. Then if it is fumigation, then uh, maybe it, if, if if it is fumigation, then I would suggest it is invisible detectors for these applications. Invisible detectors, yeah. Okay, what's the lifespan of detectors? Okay, yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, uh, we live in India, so I'm not too sure how to answer this question. Um, yeah, it's electronics end of the day you know fire detectors are nothing but a piece of electronics together yeah so in germany it is a norm it is a standard that you'll have to replace detectors after seven years which means eighth year even if the system is working for you you tend to change the fire alarm system because the standards would demand such a change in india we do not have such such a thing now with this can i can i can i tell you that uh, whether we'll have to change detectors once in 10 years it all depends on the site it all depends on the customer um I've I've seen our systems which are installed in 2005 even running today without any problems. I, I, we have you know projects like that also, except for one of few detectors. The rest of the most of the system is really good and is going fine. So, if if I had to give a number, I would say 15 years is something that we should look for a change within the system. Yeah, because things have really changed. Uh, maybe the firmware of the product, maybe the way it works, uh, directs fire faster. I think 15 years would be a decent time for you to change it. But India doesn't have a standard for today as of now. Okay, uh, going on to the next question. Do these detectors have SIL like rating, which based on the which is based on the probability of failure frequency? Sill rating, okay. No, these detectors does not are not sill rated. The detectors that we are talking about are not, yeah. Okay. Can we uh, clean detectors with the help of a blower? Yeah, yes, possible. Yes, we can clean it with a blower. Uh, but but again, as I told you, uh, when you when you I mean if, if you can see my hand, when you remove the detector from the ceiling and if you're trying it to clean it with the blow air, blow with you're trying to clean clean it with the compressed air from outside, you're actually not doing a thorough cleaning. Yeah, uh, it looks like you're sending the dirt dust inside really well inside. Whereas if you can clean from inside from from inside out, which is through the chamber, that's a better way to clean it. And um, I'm not too sure if in India if you have this, but 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 there are also uh, you know compressed cans available. For cleaning detectors in the marketplace, there are compressed cans, uh, which which is which is with clean air that are also available in the market for you to clean detectors also smoke detectors. Right. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next question, can we? Uh, uh, does it require a UPS power supply? Um, I mean, I'm sure you know the most of the pharmaceutical plants today uh, they do work on raw power, but at the same time they also have a UPS power supply installed within the plant. So that is good enough because the reason the fire lamp panel that we offer also works with the main power, but also has a battery inside, which also works with the uh, secondary power supply in case if there's a failure in the mains. Now, in your case, you already have a UPS for the entire plant. If that power is given to the fire lamp panel, in case of a failure of UPS, you still have the batteries to work for you. And therefore, I wouldn't say that you would have a separate UPS for the fire lamp system per se. Okay, I'll read out the next one. Can Bosch fire, fire alarm system uh, take integration of gas detector like hydrogen in the battery storage area. Yes, yes. I I, I said this earlier. With a, we have a module called CZIM, the conversion zone interface module. This allows you to integrate uh, any third party detector onto the Bosch fire alarm system really well. Yeah, that's possible. How many maximum detectors are there in one loop? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, very relevant to the uh, industry that we are in. So the day the the, the moment you talk about uh, Fire alarm systems, the first question that you would always encounter from customers is how many detectors can you connect in one loop? So the answer is 254 detectors or devices in any combination as a possibility in Bosch fire alarm systems. Okay, how to prevent it? And, 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 and with uh, inbuilt isolator also in each and every detector and devices. Perfect, yeah, that's a nice thing. Right. How to prevent detectors from dust particles? How to prevent? There's no way. Detectors from dust particles. 
no if you mean. cover the detector with a with a cover then it will not detect so it's it's not possible not possible yeah you have to clean this once in once in 45 days or once in six you know three months but there's no way that you can uh, stop uh, you know uh, dirt, stop dirt, it from dirt, you know, dirt, getting dirt. getting polluted yeah right uh, a similar question we're facing problem in clean room detectors during fogging and fumigation how to uh, resolve it as it will the traditional detectors will definitely have a problem with uh, fumigation yeah the traditional detectors in such cases the uh, only option is if you if you're fumigating the place i would say that you have to probably close the existing traditional detectors with a, a, a cap thing and then fumigate the place and then after that remove those caps as well that's a way to do it but otherwise invisible detector from bosch would be a better option right just uh, the final two questions what is it solution for document room fire safety what is the what's the solution for document room fire safety uh, like uh, raj a document storage room uh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay so now uh, generally we propose a aspiration solution for those application yeah okay it was it was simple simple papers lying there in the document room if, if that is my understanding yeah i would say a bosch dotc which is called the dual ray optical thermal chemical will do the job but if you want to be uh, uh, if you want to have a much more uh, you know faster detection let's say then you can go for an aspiration system for this room yeah but if it is a regular document that you're going to store and uh, you need something better than the traditional detectors then a dual ray optical thermal chemical from bosch I mean, for, can do the job dotco is is the detector and that is good enough for this place okay that's all the time we have for today so all the other discussions can happen offline i'll now request the speaker to give his concluding remarks yeah and i'll i'll want jinesh to take it up jinesh yeah uh, yeah uh, thanks uh, the uh, participants for joining uh, this uh, presentation on the real uh, challenges which we are you guys are facing in uh, the the pharmaceutical plant and i believe my colleague rajkumar has addressed uh, most of the queries or the and he has also provided the solution from his side but if you have any unanswered question from your side uh, please write it to rajkumar uh, uh, because he has already shared his email address and mo mobile number with you and uh, we will uh, answer those questions uh, asap and we will also send you the presentation as well thank you for joining this call yeah so from my side uh, many many thanks to all the participants uh, taking time out on a thursday from your busy schedule and during the working hours means a lot to us thank you so much for taking the time out and uh, 30 40 minutes of course is not good enough for us to deliver whatever we have uh, we are here to answer uh, take your calls and come to your place talk to talk to you on the products in much more detailed way and uh, please do feel free we have a team across the country uh, on all almost all states i would say so please feel free to get in touch with me and i'll be able to connect you to the right person in the right place and and we can take it up after that thank you so much that's all the time we have for today we appreciate your participation and engagement in our webinar on fire detection solutions for pharma manufacturing plants a special thanks to our bosch experts for sharing valuable insights this webinar is brought to you by bosch if you have more questions or require additional information please feel free to contact our bosch team thank you for uh, for your time and we are sure that the insights will be of great value to you thank you once again this is lakshmi priya signing off We hope to see you in our future webinars too. Thank you so much.